Death is an integral part of life. At the same time, dying has always been accompanied by some central questions that we cannot all answer. What exactly happens when we die? How do we feel when we leave life? And last but not least, is there really such a thing as life after death? Although today such questions are still often socially taboo topics that we only talk about in absolutely exceptional cases, some people have made it their task to devote their professional lives to unraveling the mystery of death. In today's video, you can find out what knowledge science has already been able to gather about dying and what experiences people have had who were actually on the verge of death. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. The AWARE Study British cardiologist Sam Parnia has devoted his professional life to a truly unique field of research, the decoding of dying. To get to the bottom of one of the greatest mysteries in history, namely, how dying feels in detail, Parnia served as the director of the so-called AWARE study a few years ago. The aim of this series of studies was to find out to what extent mental states such as perception, consciousness, and cognition can still occur without measurable brain activity. A total of 15 clinics took part in the study. In addition to some hospitals in Parnia's British homeland, hospitals from Austria and the United States also took part. The group of subjects consisted of patients who had suffered from cardiac arrest and had subsequently been resuscitated. While the definition of death in transplantation medicine is still based on brain death, Sam Parnia defines death as a process that begins with cardiac arrest and spreads to the different regions of the body over a relatively long period of time. But back to the actual AWARE study. The corresponding patients were subjected to standardized surveys, and a total of 330 people were successfully resuscitated in the participating clinics. However, since some of them sadly died soon after or couldn't take part in the study because of their health condition, 140 initial interviews were ultimately conducted. During the interviews, more than 50 patients reported having memories of being unconscious. Nine of these experiences could be classified as near-death experiences. Two subjects also reported that they experienced audio-visual impressions and out-of-body experiences during their resuscitation. This is how one of the people who had been brought back to life described being on the ceiling of the treatment room, looking down at her own body. In fact, the participant could also observe the work of the doctors and their assistants. He later told how he saw his blood pressure being measured and how a nurse was giving him a chest compression. Another test person also described such an experience, in which he was above the scene and observed the resuscitation measures of the medics. Since the patient in question, a 57-year-old Briton from Southampton, described the doctors treating him in detail, his statements could subsequently be checked and found to be correct. The basic assumption in the medical world is that the human brain remains active for a maximum of half a minute after a person's last heartbeat. In the case of the corresponding man from Southampton, however, the study directors were able to use his descriptions to reconstruct that his perception was still there after three minutes. However, another exciting aspect of the AWARE study didn't deliver the results previously hoped for. In the run-up to the research series, those responsible had put up special picture boards in the intensive care units of the participating hospitals. These, in turn, were aligned in such a way that they could only be perceived by an observer floating on the ceiling. The study leaders placed the ceiling installations in positions that are often indicated by people with out-of-body experiences. A total of 1,000 such panels were installed. However, 78% of all patients were resuscitated in rooms that had not previously been equipped with the appropriate images and symbols. This was also the case for the two subjects presented, who recorded audiovisual perceptions during the resuscitation measures. So it finally happened that none of the study participants could tell anything about the ceiling installations afterwards. How does it feel to die? 
Aside from the aware study just presented, Sam Parnia also frequently appears as a speaker. During his lectures, the British cardiologist regularly talks about medical secrets and tells the audience which near-death experiences he's already heard over the years of his work. The positive conclusion that Parnia can draw from the numerous reports is that dying is a very peaceful and pleasant process. The Briton also repeatedly emphasizes that natural death is not a stage that reached overnight. Rather, it's a process of the most diverse phases and moments. Although many of those affected report having perceived a wide variety of sensory impressions during their near-death experiences, and sometimes even meeting deceased relatives, the physician does not automatically see these seemingly supernatural descriptions as proof that there's life after death. For some of those affected, the corresponding experiences were actually so positive that after they had been brought back to life, they developed a certain longing for death from then on. It can be said that the natural process of dying was always felt to be extremely pleasant and happy, even and above all when the patients had previously had to contend with severe pain. Typically, the interviewees, completely independent of their origin and their religious beliefs, usually talked about a radiant, warm light that drew them in like a magnet. Whether the experiences described can be traced back to the natural processes of the dying brain or actually point to an idyllic, otherworldly location depends, not least, on the point of view and the perspective of the viewer. But what processes are actually taking place in the body of a person who's about to die? The process of dying. From a purely medical point of view, just like birth, dying is a physical process that's characterized by different phases and recognizable courses. How quickly the corresponding processes take place varies from person to person. In some cases, it's necessary to provide the dying person with medical support in order to make the end of their life as comfortable and painless as possible. When death approaches, this can often be recognized by the increasing loss of appetite of those affected. While a dying person can and wants to eat at least a few bites at the beginning of this phase, after a certain point, meals are usually completely refused. Another characteristic of the dying process is the paralyzing lack of energy. All of us have probably had the feeling that we couldn't get out of bed with a bad flu or after a strenuous operation. However, this leaden fatigue recedes more and more as we sleep and recover. So, while sleeping helps us enormously to regain our strength at such times, when people are dying, the situation is very different. In fact, however, it seems that people struggling with death sleep most of the day. In reality, however, it's the increasingly frequent drifting into unconsciousness in order to make the natural death of those affected as uncomplicated as possible. Physicians don't actively intervene to prevent this development. Instead, the person's medications are often changed in such a way that the dying person no longer has to swallow them and consequently doesn't have to be woken up. Eventually, there comes a point when the dying person's heart beats weaker and weaker. As a result, blood pressure drops, nails appear darker, and skin appears noticeably cooler than before. During this stage, there may be periods of inner restlessness or confusion, but also a progressively deepening loss of consciousness. There's currently no method that can show 100% what dying people feel and perceive during the process. However, because research such as the AWARE study suggests that the brain records sensory information even just before death, some loved ones choose to play their dying relatives their favorite songs. The breathing of people who've lost consciousness follows automatic processes generated by the brainstem. Because the dying cannot actively control their mouths, many breathe heavily or loudly. However, it's generally assumed that they do not feel any pain. While breathing initially follows an alternating rhythm of deep and shallow, it eventually slows down before becoming very shallow. Finally, the time comes when the dying person has breathed their last. A few minutes later, the heart also stops beating because it's no longer supplied with oxygen. There's no question that the documentation of death is a highly sensitive subject. Despite this, knowledge of such characteristic patterns is extremely important for relatives and physicians. This is the only way to understand and decide which medical steps are necessary in order to say goodbye to a loved one gently and peacefully. 
What happens when we die? Well, all of this certainly paints a clear picture about what happens in the physical world when our bodies begin to shut down. It all begs another question. What actually happens after we pass away? If you're involved in any sort of religion, chances are you believe that there's a different version of life that takes place after death. After all, virtually every religion in the world believes in some form of afterlife. If you think about this for a moment, we have to ask ourselves, could some of these various religions be correct? After all, there are dozens of different religions out there, and almost every one of them claims that life is nothing more than a test, and the real adventure of our existence begins after our physical bodies fade away. If so many various religions have been claiming this for thousands upon thousands of years, we have to provide these religions with the time of day and consider that they may in fact be correct. One of the most popular religions in the modern world is Christianity, and it's one of the most popular religions because there's quite simply so much evidence to support it. In Christianity, followers believe that a man known as Jesus of Nazareth was the Son of God. Jesus lived around 2,000 years ago and passed away some time Time around 4 BC after being crucified. This religion claims that after Jesus' death, he rose from his tomb, preached about repentance and salvation, then ascended into heaven to return to his Father's side. Jesus and his followers have often told stories of the afterlife, explaining that there's no pain or suffering and that we'll be reunited with all of our former relatives who lived good lives, repented for their sins, and made it to heaven. Heaven is rarely ever described in detail, but but some descriptions claim that it has streets paved with gold. The Bible explains that we'll be rewarded in heaven based on our efforts to spread the message of Jesus Christ on earth. We'll be given mansions in according to how we spread this message, and we'll live and dwell directly with God and Jesus. According to the Christian faith, the only thing that must be done in order to get to heaven is believe that Jesus was the real Son of God, repent for the sins we've committed, become baptized by being immersed in water in the name of Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit, and then live faithfully until death. Truthfully, it's a very simple process to get to heaven if you follow Christian principles. There are also many other religions out there who tell vastly different stories about the afterlife. Some religions claim that based on how you lived on earth, you'll be given sexual pleasures in the afterlife unlike anything you could imagine. Other religions claim that depending on how you lived your natural life, you'll be born again either as a different human or an animal. The truth is, science will never be able to fully explain certain religions or the afterlife. In reality, we can all simply do the best that we can in order to get to heaven or whatever form of afterlife you may believe in. So folks, we hope that we were able to provide you with exciting information with today's somewhat more serious post. What's your attitude towards this sensitive topic? Do you believe in life after death? If you want, then simply write us the thoughts that go through your head about this in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell so you never miss any of our videos in the future. Finally, feel free to take a look at the other posts on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the pictures in the credits. Thank you for your interest, have a good one, and see you next time.